What's up? This is Fitness Boyd coming at you selfie pic style. I cannot find my tripod mount, so I'm holding my camera freehand tonight. And I'm coming at you. I don't know if you can tell. I'm in my kitchen like all these other weightlifting gurus, you know, except we're not doing kitchen cooking videos. Tonight what I want to talk about is volume and one rep max calculators. Now you get on these message boards and you hear conversations about volume like, you know, how much volume should I be doing? And you hear talk about hypertrophy and power training. Watching the P90X video, for example, they talk about volume on there. And you have uh, Tony Horton saying for the ladies, you know, trying to get toned, you should be doing reps of 12 to 15. For the guys trying to get big and buff and strong, you should be doing reps of 8 to 10. Um, on the message board, you hear, you know, 12 reps for hypertrophy, 5 reps, you know, 1 to 5 reps for power trying to decide what to do. Well, let me break it down for you. It's really pretty simple. What you have to consider is type one and type two muscle fibers. That'd be slow and fast twitch muscles. Type one are your slow twitch muscles. And the easy way to remember that is slow twitch are one. One is the first series of muscles to be activated for any given task. So if you're gonna pick up your channel changer in front of the TV, that's a type one slow twitch muscle. There are efficient muscles. They're muscles that you use in day-to-day -day activities. Uh, they're muscles that are built for efficiency. Um, they're built for endurance. They're built for doing low weight, uh, high reps. So it could be picking up a channel changer all day long. It could be running a marathon. That would be putting step after step for mile after mile. That would be type one or slow twitch muscle fibers. First set of muscles to be activated. Type two muscle fibers on the other hand are your fast twitch muscles and you actually have type two A, type two B. And you continue going down in order. Type two A are the kind of intermediary muscles that you know uh, type one can't quite handle it because type one remember are for lifting up that remote control or running your marathon. Type 2, on the other hand, are for lifting the heavier weights. Weight starts getting heavier, you need your intermediary muscles. Got an awesome thunderstorm going on behind me. Uh, type 2B are the big muscles. That's the, those are the muscles that really get activated with hypertrophy. Those are the muscles that it takes to lift heavy freaking weights. Okay? So, um, the further you go down in the numbering system, letter system, the more weight that these muscles are designed to lift. But as you can imagine by their very nature, and as you know from working out, type 2 muscles are not endurance type muscles. They are uh, well equipped for delivering large amounts of energy in a short period of time. But after short periods of time of expending large amounts of energy, those type 2 muscle fibers need to uh, recover. Okay, so that's what you need to know about fast and slow twitch muscles. The question then is, what do I need to do to build muscle? You need to be thinking about what type of muscle fibers do I want to activate? Are you trying to be an endurance athlete, marathon runner, trying to be a um, triathlete? Well, you want to work on your slow twitch muscle fibers, obviously. Along with that goes cardio, okay? On the flip side, are you trying to build muscle, get big and strong? Well, then you need to be activating your fast twitch muscle fibers during your workouts. Okay, so the question becomes, what type of volume or what type of repetitions per set should you be lifting in order to engage your fast twitch muscle fibers? Because again, those are the muscle fibers that get big. Those are the muscle fibers that are designed to lift heavy weights over short periods of time. Think a sprinter. Sprinters have large muscles, right? Well, um, what I have gone to is a one rep max calculator. Um, one rep max calculators are crucial for determining what kind of workout you're putting in. And let me explain. One rep max calculators, basically what these uh, scientists or mathematicians or statisticians or whatever you want to call them what they did and they're really you know fitness people they did some math they tried to figure out okay we have a set of people here 
we all know that if they do 10 repetitions of something, um, th we know that their one rep max typically is this. So they diver derive different formulas to try and determine if you do X number of reps at, um, you know, say 10 reps at a certain weight, that equals one rep at another weight. What I've done is converted all of my workouts, no matter what the repetitions are, I've, tried, I've converted that down to a one rep max. Now what's the point? You see people on these fitness blogs or you know, uh, message boards or whatever talking about, well, what kind of volume should I do? Well, you know, if you're doing a heavier weight, and we'll use a ludicrous amount, we'll say 500 pounds. Doing heavier weight, lifting 500 pounds, well, maybe you can only do one rep of that. That would seem similar to doing uh, five reps of 100 pounds because, you know, you multiply five by 100, you get 500. You multiply one by 500, you get 500. So that seems about equal, but we all know that lifting uh, 100 pounds five times is much easier than lifting 500 pounds one time. So, you know, on these message boards, people will say maybe you should be doing, um, you know, three sets if you're lifting higher reps and you should only be doing one set if you're lifting lower reps. Get all these confusing messages out there. Don't do that. What you need to do is use a one rep max calculator that will equalize every single lift you do. Okay, so if I'm doing five reps at say 225, that calculates out to being a one rep max of about 265, okay? Five reps, uh, 225 out to 265, that's about equivalent to, I don't know, 12 reps of 185. Okay, 12 reps of 185, one rep max calculator also will give you the number of 265. So I know if I use a one rep max calculator, I can equivocate each of my sets to a common denominator which is my one rep max. So I know if I do a set of 12, and I know at that given set of 12, my weight is 185 pounds, I know that I am lifting approximately a load of 265 maximum pounds in a one rep max. I know that 12 reps at 185 is going to be, from an energy standpoint, equivalent to my lifting five reps at 225 pounds. Because again, five reps at 225 pounds comes out to about 265 one rep max. I know that anywhere between five reps and 12 reps, um, what my one rep max works out to be, and I know if I'm hitting my goals or not based on when I run the numbers through the one rep max calculator, Am I progressively building muscle? Am I progressively hitting larger one rep maxes as I work out over time? I know it's a lot to conceptually take in, but that's really, I think, the best way to determine uh, energy despite what the load might be. Okay, now the question is then, I started out talking about type one and type two muscle fibers. I finished up by talking about the one rep max calculator. Interesting thing about the one rep max calculator is um, most one rep max calculators, um, there are two primary ones. One is by Boyd Epley. That's for uh, more for people who have uh, fast twitch muscle fibers. There's another one rep max calculator done by a guy named Matt Prezecki. That's more for guys who have slow twitch muscle fibers. And again, most of us, you know, we're a hybrid of the two. Some of us have dominant slow twitch, some of us have dominant fast twitch, most of us are a hybrid. Point being, each of these one rep max calculators generate different results. Uh, for example, I do five reps at 225. Matt Brzecki's one rep max calculator, because it's geared towards slow twitch muscle fibers, is going to give me a lower one rep max than Boyd Epley. What do I take home from all this? What's interesting is that if you look at the Brzecki and Epley one rep max calculators at 10 reps, at 10 repetitions, they are equal. What is interesting is that 
And gosh, I don't want to belabor this. I'm already in 10 minutes into this video. When, when you look down right, right to it, fast twitch muscle fibers, generally speaking, are going to be targeted when you're doing repetitions of about 10 and less. Okay, so if you want to target your fast twitch muscle fibers, good rule of thumb based on one rep max calculators, it will work out to be 10 or less. Okay, and really uh, for power lifting, it's going to work out to five or less. For hypertrophy, you're going to be not only working your uh, fast twitch muscle fibers, but you're also going to want to uh, be working your slow twitch muscle fibers as well. It's going to be more of an endurance type lift. What you'll find is to start activating those endurance muscles, but maintain, activate your endurance muscles, but to maintain stress on your type 2A and type 2B muscles, you need to be really lifting in the range of 10 and more. I'd say 10 to 12, uh, maybe 10 to 15 maximum. Another interesting thing that you'll find as you work through the one rep max calculators and what all one rep max calculators will tell you whether it be Boyd Epley, Matt Brzecki, or others, is that after 10 reps, the one rep max calculator starts to lose um, effectiveness or precision or accuracy. That's the best word, accuracy. The reason that the one rep max calculators lose accuracy after 10 reps is because at that 10 rep mark, your type 1 muscle fibers really have a lot to do with how many extra reps you can squeeze out beyond 10. If, you have, uh, if you're a high endurance athlete or if you have a lot of type 1 muscle fibers or very well trained type 1 muscle fibers, anything beyond 10, your type 1 muscles are really going to be assisting your type 2 A and B muscles that have burned out at that point, okay? So um, my whole point in all of this was to explain to you the importance of using a 1 rep max calculator to equalize the playing field between each set that you're doing. The goal that you should be trying to achieve is to progressively increase your one rep max lift after lift after lift. Thanks for tuning in. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, and comment.